Hi, I'm Heather Isaacs, one of the spiritual care counselors at Hospice of the East Bay. And I tell this story in gratitude to PJ and to her husband, Ken, who gave his blessing and permission for me to tell you this story. The first time I met PJ, Ken wanted to make sure that we on the hospice team would really get to know her. PJ had been living with dementia for over 10 years. And by the time she came onto hospice, she had long lost her ability to speak for herself or to express in any clear way her experience of life. Ken had been caring for her at home for over a decade with the support of family and friends and caregivers. When I walked into their beautiful home for the first time, I could see PJ sitting at a distance in the living room with her caregiver. But instead of introducing me to her right then, Ken waved to me to follow him down the hallway, pointing out, as he did so, distinctive artwork that was on display throughout their home, evidence of PJ's career in interior design and her loving intention of making their home a sacred oasis. The painting her husband wanted to show me, however, was one that she had not chosen. On the ceiling directly above PJ's hospital bed, Ken had commissioned an artist to paint a life-sized portrait of PJ as an angel. The ceiling was low enough so that when the bed was raised, the angel was only a few feet above it, and there was a radiance and a clarity to the painting that made me catch my breath. This, Ken explained, is how she has always looked to me. She's my angel baby. He talked about PJ's loving and kind heart and how PJ stood more accurately for peace and joy than an abbreviation of her first and middle names. I understood then that before he opened the circle of care around his wife to new people, like the hospice team, he wanted us to truly get a sense of her spirit and how much she meant to the people who loved her. PJ, now wordless with flat affect in the next room, could not tell us who she was and it wasn't clear that she remembered who she was anymore either. For Ken then, the angel portrait revealed PJ's spirit as clearly as if PJ was waking up to look at herself in a full length mirror every morning. For a person with dementia, we may never know for sure their inner experience of reality. So I can only guess how PJ saw herself when she woke up each morning under the radiant image of her truest self as expressed through the love of her husband's eyes and through the artist's skill. Did she remember herself, if only for a moment? We only got to know PJ and Ken for a short time as she died within a couple of months after she first came onto hospice. But the love story of PJ and Ken will always stay with me even though I was only privileged to witness a very small part of their life's journey together. I carry, because of them, the reminder that when we forget who we are, and there are many ways of forgetting ourselves that have nothing to do with dementia, it matters that we have people who can reflect back to us in love who we really are, our true spirit. And it matters that we can be those people for others when they forget themselves, that we hold up the reflection of love to them, even if we can never know how they take it in. May we each know and remember ourselves and each other through the eyes of love.